Hi everyone, this is Nya and today I'm going to be painting these green leaf doodles. They're very easy, simple, and relaxing to make, so let's begin by going over the colors. This is Sap Green by Holbein, Azure Blue by White Knight, Charm Brilliant Dark by Schminke, Lamp Black by Daniel Smith, and I'll also be using Lead Proof White by Dr. Paige Martins. I'm also going to add some gold accents, preferably I would use my Fine Tech Gold palette but I couldn't find it when I was painting this on the day so I just used my gold pen instead. I'm going to be making a couple of doodles. For the first one, I'm going to begin by wetting the center of my paper. Then I'm just going to take some paint and scatter them around while the surface is still damp. I first used the Jean Brilliant Dark and while the surface is still wet, I added a little bit of other colors. You can also mix them together if you would like to, but I'm just scattering them around and letting them bloom and mingle with each other. Since the surface here is quite wet, the paint is traveling quite a lot. This means that there's a lot of water on the paper, so I'm using quite a thick consistency when I apply the paint. And before it dries, if some areas are too dark, I would either just move them around with my brush to pull it further outwards, or even take off the excess pigment using tissue. Here I'm just adding some dots around the edges, and I just find that this makes the base color look a bit more loose. Once I'm happy with the color distribution, I'm going to dry it off quickly, then unmask the sides. The reason why I masked the sides is because I was painting on a very damp surface, which would make the paper warp. But I knew that I wanted to paint right to the edge of the paper, so by unmasking the sides, I can continue painting some wiggly lines diagonally across the edges of the paper. The next thing I'm going to add are some large leaves. For this, I used a mix of sap green and Jean Brilliant Dark. And I'm using my large brush to paint on the shapes of leaves growing out of one branch so they're sort of facing each other and I'm angling them upwards. By the way, you can use any color mixtures or any color combinations you would like to. This is just a doodle so feel free to be creative and have fun using your favorite colors. For me, since I'm going to be layering on more leaf textures, I wanted to begin with something light, which is why I mixed the sap green with John Brilliant to create something that's a bit more pastel. Once I'm done painting a few leaves, I'm going to use my liner brush and using the same color, I'm going to paint the main stem and the rest of the smaller stems to connect to each of the leaves. I'm going to add the midrib and the veins of the leaves after the surface is more or less dry. For this, I use the same mixture with added sap green in the ratio, which would create something that's of darker value. And I'm using still a medium to light consistency to paint on the veins, so those details doesn't have too strong of a contrast compared to the base color. While painting on the veins, I like to also play around with the distance so it looks a bit more organic and less stiff. Next, I'm going to add another layer of leaves, but this time I'm going to make it darker so it stands out against the base leaf that I painted earlier. So here I'm using a darker value by using a mix of sap green and lamp black. I'm starting with my liner brush to paint really thin stems, so I'm using a thick consistency with a very light load on my brush. So it's much easier to control the lines and make them nice and thin. Then I'm going to follow this up. I switch to a larger brush to paint on the leaves right on the branch. And I also use a slightly lighter consistency and a slightly heavier brush load. So it's easier for the paint to flow out of my brush. To make the leaves nice and delicate, it helps to leave a bit of space in between the leaves and the stem. And if your gap end up being a bit too large, you can switch to your liner brush and paint a line continuing the bottom tip of the leaves to the main stem. 
the fine lines and small bits of space will give your eyes some space and it will make the composition look a bit more airy and delicate as opposed to the thick ends of the leaves touching the branch which might make them look a bit too bulky. You can also play around with how the leaves are positioned. I like to play with the angle and how some of them might flop downwards and so on. The variation will help create more of a natural feel and it will make the composition look a bit more organic. So now I'm just going to continue painting more leaves until I'm happy with the spread. If you like more of a simpler composition and you're looking for a minimalist aesthetic, I feel like this already looks finished as a composition and you can leave it here. But the purpose of this for me was to doodle and relax, so I'm just going to add more elements and just play around a bit more. So here I'm using my liner brush to draw on some hollow leaves with a lighter consistency of the same color. and. I'm also just adding a line in the middle of those leaves as the midrib. Since this part is mostly like drawing, you can also use other mediums if you have colored pens, markers, or even just colored pencils. I feel like by playing around with different mediums, it'll introduce different textures which will give more character and interest to your doodles. Next, I'm going to add another element. This time I'm using my gold pen to draw on some flowers. I'm not sure what these are called, but I basically draw a curvy stem and more curved lines to form sort of like thin petals. And I'm going to add dots on top of those petals. I feel like the gold would be more shimmery if I used my Fine Tech Gold palette, but I couldn't find it on the day when I was filming this. I actually thought I left it in Austria, but I ended up finding it and my drawer underneath my other art supplies a couple of weeks later, but it was too late by then. I just feel like using the brush or even an ink will make the lines look a bit more fluid and less uniform because I find that the uniformity of the line weight kind of makes the composition look a bit more static. It's too late for me, but I just want to mention it in case you want to take it into consideration for your own doodles. That's basically it for the focal point. Here I'm just adding more wiggly lines to emphasize the diagonal composition. And I'm also going to add some dots around the sides for extra textures. This is from a mix of Saprine with Sean Brilliant Dark. And that's basically it for the first doodle. Now let's move on to the second one. For this one, I masked all of the sides because I'm going to begin by using the same wet on wet technique and this time I am wetting or dampening a larger surface than before and I'm starting by using a thick consistency mix of Azure Blue and John Brilliant Dark. I'm going to play around with the ratio to create different tones. I'm placing the colors diagonally and as you can see the surface is quite wet so the paint is blooming a lot and I'm also going to switch around with some sap green as well but it's completely up to you what ratio you want the sap green to the azure blue if you want your painting to be a bit more blue then you would use more azure blue and vice versa. When I was scattering the paint, I felt like there's a bit 
too many tones is a bit too busy for the base color so I ended up just painting on some streaks of the color and this way there's a slightly better blend with each other but if you like the looser look before where there were splashes of color you can also keep it that way this is just my preferred choice for the second doodle For this one, I do want to cover a larger space, which is why I ended up doing the streaks as well. And once I'm happy with the color distribution, I'm going to dry it off slightly using a hair dryer. I'm not going to dry it completely, but I don't want the surface to be the stamp. So I'm just drying a little bit so the surface has a bit of moisture still. So on the stamp surface, I'm going to use my liner brush using a mix of all the colors. Just find the tone of green or bluish green that you like to paint on some leaves which are going to subtly blur into the background. After that, I'm going to dry off the surface again and add more leaves, still very lightly. For the first one, I used mostly azure blue and jean brilliant with a little bit of sap green and the tiniest bit of lamp black just to mute the color slightly. And for the second one, I'm going to again use all of the colors, but the dominant colors for this one is sap green and jean brilliant. I'm still using a light to medium consistency with this pastel colors because I still want these leaves to act sort of as background. I feel like the white spaces are a bit too large so here I'm using a mix of sap green and jean brilliant dark in a thin consistency. I'm also just going to line it with this circular shape for a bit of variation. I'm also going to glaze on some splashes of color using the base color that I used before. I just felt like this needs to be a little bit darker in certain areas and also to paint over some of the leaves to make them blend into the background more. Once I'm done, I want to make sure that the background is completely dry using a hair dryer to make the process quicker. And here I'm using again the mix of lamp black with sap green in a thick consistency. I'm also using my liner brush to paint the stems first. As for the leaves, I'm just going to paint one at the top and on either side on the left and right until I reach the bottom of the page. If you have any other ideas for the leaf shapes, you can also play around with that. For me, I just find that this is the easiest type of leaves for me to paint. So I'm just going to continue until I reach the bottom of the page. After that, I'm going to flip my paper around so the bottom becomes the top and paint the same type of leaf on the other side. For the leaf on the other side, you don't have to make it exactly the same. I'm going to create basically the same concept for the shape of the leaves, but you can play around with the length and the size if you would like to.
Once I'm done with the main large leaves, I'm going to add smaller ones on either side for the top and the bottom. For this, I'm going to use Azure Blue with Jean Brilliant Dark as the main color. But I'm also going to take a little bit of the dark green mix so the color becomes a little bit more muted. For this one, I made the stem come out from the side and also the length a little bit shorter. I still curve it and in terms of the leaf shapes, I made them rounded. But again, just like the previous leaf, it's completely up to you whether you want to play around with the different shapes for the leaves or not. Also, since I'm painting smaller leaves, I decided to switch to my small brush here. This is a size 0. And to paint them, instead of using the pressure of my brush, I actually prefer to sort of draw an outline of the leaf shape and then fill in the rest. Here, I decided to add another small one at the bottom just to fill in a bit more space. After that, I'm going to flip my paper again and do the same thing on the side. For this leaf, instead of painting an extra one at the bottom, I decided to branch this one out to fill in the space. And just like the first doodle, if you like the simpler look, you can leave it here. But for me, I felt like drawing and doodling, so I decided to add some smaller branches on the larger leaves. I also decided to add the midrib and veins off the leaves using this gold pen, which I kind of regretted in the end because I felt like the weight of the pen is a bit too thick for these details. Again, if you have access to an ink pen or gold paint, which you can sort of brush it on, I feel like you can control the weight of those lines a bit more. But of course, you can customize and leave out things in the doodle that you're not into and create something that you'll be proud of. As for me, I just accepted my mistake here, but I still enjoyed the process of drawing it on, so I'm just going to continue onwards. For the last element, I decided to tie this to the first doodle by adding some dots. This time I used bleed proof white for the dots though because I feel like there's already a lot of greens going on. Once I'm done with the dots, I'm going to unmask the sides of my doodle. And to finish it off, I like to extend the stems right to the edge of the paper using the same colors. For these small leaves, I felt like the stem was a bit too long in comparison to how many leaves there were. So I decided to add more underneath. And I'm also going to add another branching out from this one. And that's basically it for this doodle set. I really enjoyed the process of playing around with limited colors and just focusing on basic leaf shapes and of course doodling for relaxation. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. If you do, please consider subscribing to help grow this channel. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!